Hey everybody, my name is Rob, I'm a computational linguist, and I'm here to talk about uh, epidemics. So disease outbreaks are the single greatest killer in the world, um, and yet I was shocked to discover less than a year ago that no one is even tracking every outbreak that's occurring, uh, despite the prevalence of information which uh, is available freely online. Uh, so a group of us at Epidemic IQ are uh, addressing this problem right now using uh, both crowdsourcing and natural language processing. Uh, interesting linguistic fact about the world, which is tangentially related to my actual talk, uh, the world's ecological diversity and the world's linguistic diversity are concentrated together. Uh, the world's ecological uh, diversity, of course, correlates with uh, the diversity of pathogens. Um, some of the major outbreaks that we have seen over the past few decades have been reported openly. Uh, weeks and months online, in the case of bird flu and swine flu, uh, more locally in terms of HIV for decades before they were finally identified. Uh, in the last 75 years, we've only eradicated one disease, which is smallpox, uh, and yet air travel has increased, such that a pathogen could travel to any part of the world in 24 hours, or 72 hours if you fly United. Um, so recapping from last year, I, I spoke about humanitarian work at scale, uh, cross-validating crowdsourced work for greater accuracy, and the application of machine learning to medical messaging. Uh, so we've taken these different approaches and combined them uh, to scale. So we're processing about one billion data points per day from about half a million sources and growing uh, in more than 70 languages. Uh, utilizing thousands of microtaskers. Um, to get an idea of that scale, imagine every crisis map you've ever heard about. In the 15 seconds that you're looking at this slide, we're going to process twice as many reports. Uh, so this is big. Uh, and we find that the first signal in 95% of cases is not in structured data, it's in plain language. So the famous Google flu trends case of mid-Atlantic uh, flu. Uh, was preceded three weeks by CNN. Um, and we find this to be the case in almost every available outbreak. There is an early signal in plain language, but it's buried in plain view. So this is from that same CNN report. Yes, we care about the increase in flu. No, we don't care about the spunky boy and his 550-pound shark. So we need to filter through all of this irrelevant information to find out what is about an outbreak. And of course, we need to do this in thousands of languages, uh, more than any of us can uh, possibly hope to understand within you know, one relatively small team. Uh, and so we do this using uh, machine learning, natural language processing, um, in a manner like this. So our machine learning algorithm can learn uh, what is about a given disease, uh, what location it's in, um, you know, whether it's suspected or predicted uh, or confirmed, and pull in all these bits of data um, very quickly in parallel. And so this artificial intelligence gives us a head start of human intelligence. This is us tracking E. coli in Germany earlier this year, and you can see that we're ahead of the European Center for Disease Control uh, by five crucial days. Um, I, if I'd known I was going to be the last talk before dinner, I wouldn't have spoken about deadly food poisoning. Um, we keep our machine learning algorithms updated uh, through microtasking. So famously, Amazon Mechanical Turk, you pay people a few cents, uh, they can confirm or deny whether something ambiguous is about an outbreak. Uh, but this is my, my favorite example of one of our workforces, people working for virtual currency and online games. So in order to track the actual agricultural outbreak in Europe, we will paint people in Europe virtual seeds in Farmville to confirm whether or not a given report was about an outbreak. Uh, this is all combined in a way that I'm happy to talk to you about in detail one on one, um, so that our analysts, that the domain experts who know about health, um, who we only have a cap number with, uh, can deal with these you know, billions of data points per day. Um, little graph here, uh, we're beating the, the current best published values by a lot. I actually like the, the top two better. It shows that uh, our system using AI is better than humans could possibly be. Um, it simply wouldn't be possible for people to, to calculate these probabilities over such large fe feature vectors in the same way. Uh, the one thing that troubles us the most about big data is that this here would be considered anonymous uh, 10 years ago when it was only available publicly, but in uh, health journals. Now that they could be streamed back to that girl's village, maybe it's identifying to them, but anonymous to us. Um, things like the flu are going to be really hard for us to stop. We do hope that we will never see this again, that HIV was 
uh, around and reported for decades before it was finally isolated. Uh, as well as there not being an organization that tracks all the outbreaks, just like you've seen in the movies, there is not, in fact, an organization that is mapping this to transportation and social networks. Uh, so that's going to be our next step, uh, combining the information in that way. Uh, most of our technology was coded in a two-month period. Um, it was about a new technique, not about the technology itself. And I'm really happy to finish my presentation by uh, sharing a photo uh, of all the amazing people at Epidemic IQ who work together. Thank you very much.